try to kill anybody, you know. Yeah. But the thing is, is that, is that they hated him because he told the truth. And the thing is, is that Jesus, you know, uh, he said, look, he says, I am the truth. I am the way. And I was sharing that yesterday. And the thing that, you know, I think about this morning, you know, is when the Bible talks about truth, you know, yeah. thy word is truth. It's talking about Jesus. Sorry. So everything about, you know, what we believe and what is in this Bible, it's all about Jesus. See? And the fact of the matter is, is when you reject the word of God, you are rejecting the son of God. True. It's yeah. what you're doing. See? Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, is that there are people, you know, who have become so Jesus. Says, There's no way you're going to try to convince somebody that the person that you say he is, isn't if they love him. You know, you're not going to do that to somebody you love. You're going to go, amen, brother. You know, yeah. if Jesus yeah. is Lord, yes, I believe that. See, right. yeah. the thing about the spirit of God that lives in every one of us, we are going to agree with everything that is of That's God. True. Everything. We're not going to be, we're not going to be uh, uh, questioning each other about, well, well this, Bob, this the verse is true, or that verse is true, or this verse is true, or that. No, we're going to be in agreement. Hallelujah, man. Amen. Tell me some more about the Lord. Amen. See? Because the thing about knowing the Lord, and not only that, that name, Jesus, that name, Jesus, there is no other name given among men, Amen. the Bible says, whereby we must be Amen. saved, other Amen. than the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus has all power on the earth, beneath the earth, and above the earth. Amen. See, Amen. we day church now is the fact that we've got men who have decided that they know better than God and they say who Jesus is and who Jesus was and all this stuff, you know, and without any kind of confirmation of it. Right. True. right. Everything that I tell you as a child of God concerning Jesus, I can prove it by this book. Amen. So you got up in this mess that they're out there, you know, shoving up on people and stuff. It all is a bunch of crap is what it is. Yeah. You know, anything that's not truth has no value. Right. Amen. Amen. If it is not of God, it has no value in leading you and teaching you and guiding you in the truth. That's right. Amen. None whatsoever, see? Amen. Because right. the thing about it is that if you don't really know God, if you have no relationship with Jesus, if you've never, ever repented of your sin, all your words, every word that comes out your mouth falls automatically right to the ground. Right. That's right. They don't mean nothing. Amen. True. They don't mean anything because the Bible says True. that we as children of God, it says that we can do all things through Christ. True. That's right. Amen. Through Christ. See, there's nothing we can't do as long as that we're doing it through the Lord. Amen. Right. Not True. one right. thing and stuff. But people would much rather believe liars and deceivers as opposed to accepting what God says. See? And not only that, you know, God can tell you something, and if you've got enough common sense to go to the Bible and read it, you'll find out that what God is telling you is true. Right. As I've been saying for about a month now, you know, God cannot lie. Right. Amen. It is impossible, impossible for him to lie. Amen. He can't lie. That's so right. in other words, everything that he says is the truth. Right. Right. See? Right. And there is no way anybody, you know, can take God's truth and question it. Right. See? You can't question God's word. It's truth. Right. See? And what they don't understand is, see, this is what happens to a lot of people. They believe what the world tells them about themselves. See? They believe, well, you know, Jesus really wasn't the son of God. He was really, you know, just a prophet or whatever. So, a pumped up deceiver. A pumped up child of the devil. Yeah. And stuff. Because anybody's not telling you God's truth, they're telling you a lie. Right. And if they're telling you a lie, the Bible says that they will have their part in the lake of fire with the devil and his angels. See? Right. But when you look around and you see what's going on and what people are doing, whatever, there's no fear of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's no fear. People are not afraid of going to hell. That's mm -hmm. right. Because they've convinced themselves that hell is not real. Right. And that Jesus will not send them there. What I just said a while ago, he said, look, you better be fearing me because I can't send you to hell. Right. And if you do not obey my word and live according to my word, I am casting you into hell. Amen. See, right. you can be assured of that. That's right. You know, that is going to happen. That is going to happen no matter what you or I think about that. Right. See, 
God's word does not say, okay, let me just stick some of this word up here and let me just fan it through the crowd and just see if I can get a few to accept it. No. He said, this is the truth. You know, take it or leave it. Right. Amen. It's what he is saying. It's the same principle that he offered us when it came to choosing you this day whom you're going right. to serve. That's see, right. you get to make the choice. Nobody, as I've said, can be, will be able, will be able to blame God, you know, for their demise once they're dead. That's right. right. Yeah. They, they're not going to be able to blame God because there are too many examples of people who have truly taken God in his word, believed it, lived it, confessed it, shared it, and whatever, and their whole lives have changed. Yes. Right. See, oh, yeah. their lives have changed now. Yes. So you can't say, well, I don't believe that that works. See, no, you don't want to believe that it works. Really been walking with the Lord. You stop gonna challenge one of their traditions. Mm -hmm. See, like I do every year, that Christmas thing. See, mm -hmm. you start challenging that kind of their traditions and stuff like that, and you will see the fangs just start rising up out the face. That's see, right. yeah, that's because of the fact that you know you can't tell me that I can't celebrate this or that. I'm not telling you you can't celebrate it. God says you should have no, other, no right. idols. You shouldn't right. worship idols. And you shouldn't have no other God other than him. Right. See? Right. And he told you to come out from the world. You know, not try to have one foot in the world and one foot in, in, into, into Christ and stuff. Right. Because if you got one foot in the world, you may as well have both of them in there because that separated you from God all because you are doing worldly things that are not of God. Right. Yeah. Why would God, you know, Don't expect me to agree with that. And if a person is truly a child of God, you're not agreeing with other people's sins. Right. You're not agreeing with that stuff. Yeah. You're going to be just like Jesus because the Bible says as he is, so are we. Right. And not only that, if you say that you're in him, you need to live as he lived and walk as he walked. Amen. Jesus rebuked sin at every turn. Amen. Right. Right. He did not placate anybody's sin. Mm -hmm. That's See? Right. Yeah. And if you think that you're going to get away with sinning against God, you got another thing coming. See? Sure. And that is going to hell. That's that other thing coming. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. The thing is, is that God's word is God's word. Right. right. And it's not changing for anybody. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. Amen. How many times have you heard me say, the Lord says, I'm the Lord thy God, I change not. not. Right, How many times you heard me say the Bible says that Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forever? Mm -hmm. Doing it all that. See, if it makes you feel good, mm -hmm. if it gives you some kind of personal satisfaction, guess what? You're gonna keep doing it. Mm -hmm. See. But one thing for sure, those of us who are truly of God, our satisfaction only comes in pleasing Him. Yes. If we're going to be satisfied, if we're going to be pleased, if we're going to have peace and joy, you know, of the Lord and stuff, it is coming from Jesus. Yes. See, yes. it ain't coming from no man. Right. It's not coming from a church. See, the thing is that people have put churches, buildings, you know, have made buildings supersede who Jesus really is. Right. They say, if I go into this building, oh, I'm going to be holy. Why is that? Because people have given that impression if you just go to church, yep. see, you're going to be right with God. Mm. That ain't that ain't it. No. Uh -uh. Because if that were the case, those people in the New Testament after the day of Pentecost, all of them would so Peter's coming, you know, we're going to hear what thus saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. See? And so they met in the house. Right. They didn't say, okay, meet us down on the corner on uh, at, at, at synagogue number two. A shrill vap Baptist number three. See? <laughs> meet us at one of those places and stuff. See? They didn't say that. Right. See? They said, okay, bring them on to the house. Mm -hmm. See? And you know, the thing about it is there was no question where Peter was going to come back to once he was sent for and came. Right. It was a normal thing for them to meet at homes. Mm -hmm. It was an abnormal thing for them to meet in church buildings. Right. Yeah. See? You don't read nothing in the Bible about that. Right. You don't read nothing in the Bible about them guys pumping up churches or pumping up buildings or whatever. Right. See? 
You know what they would do? First and foremost, they would meet in people's houses. Mm -hmm. See? And the one thing about meeting in homes is the fact that there's a whole lot more personal relationship right. when you meet in a home and stuff. Amen. That's right. You really get to know the people. <clears throat> I really get to know the people as a pastor, you know, that God has entrusted me with their soul. Right. We're ministering to their soul. Right. And not only that, we are able to interact with one another in a more closely uh, a relationship and really get to know and, and, and love one another for real. Amen. Right. And we can actually say brother or sister for real. Right. Why? Amen. We spend a lot of time together. Right. We yeah. fellowship with one another. Yeah. And we all have what? The same spirit yeah. living in us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Our goals are the Amen. same. Our purpose is the same. And that is to do the will Amen. of God right. and to love each other as Christ loved the church. Right. Amen. Amen. is really really sad is I've heard people say you know they'll enter their church and they have the greeters at the church and they'll go hey okay so we're glad you came to visit the person said I've been going to church here for 30 years this is true statement this is an actual thing that happened at the church we used to go to years ago yeah. <laughs> well, we really like, you know, thank you for visiting. Well, I've been going to church here for 30 years, see? Yeah. And that tells you right there just how stoic and how divided the church is, right. see? Yeah. All we do is get together, all people do is get together on Sunday, you know, to gather together in a building. Ain't no spirit rep or present there and stuff no. No. because you're not preaching personal relationships with each other as Jesus said you ought to have with him. Right. If we have a personal relationship with Jesus and if we make it, you know, very personal to us and Jesus makes our one-on-one -on -one personal with him, we're going to do the same thing with each other. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's going to be important for me to love you as my brother and as my right. sister. Right. See? Yeah. But in these big churches, you can't get to do that. Mm -hmm. This church, our church, the church in homes and stuff, they are far more biblical than these buildings that you got that you are that people enter on every Sunday and That's stuff. That's right. That's right. And, and, Those are synagogues. And one thing about you know yeah. uh, another thing yeah. about you know them. when when you have you know when you meet in homes and stuff. See, you don't have a whole bunch of overhead. No. We have no overhead. Right. See, because the fact of the matter is, I don't get no salary and I don't want one. Right. Never have wanted a salary. See, because yeah. I've always believed the scripture that says. Freely you have received, Amen. freely Amen. you give. Right. See, Amen. that's the way I've always believed. My wife will tell you that. Yeah. I ain't yeah. never when, when I go preach at churches and stuff. I don't want their money. Right. Well, you know we gonna we gonna we gonna take you up and up. Well, I don't want it. Give it to somebody in the church that needs it. See, there you go. I don't want yeah. it. But the th the sad thing about it is there are a lot of pastors and preachers that go to these churches for that very not that reason but for this reason. We yeah. want the money. Yeah. We want the money. See. And they go so that they can receive payment, you know, for serving God. Mm. That's what you need to do. And the sad thing is, they're not serving God, they're serving self. Right. See? right. Yeah. Because their actions, you know, it ain't about what pe so much what people say as it was with Jesus. It's about their actions. Mm -hmm. It's about, you just watch what they do and, and how they act, you know, and stuff like that. That'll tell you a whole lot about them and stuff, see? Oh, yeah. And they want that money and they want that recognition and stuff, you know. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, is that the first thing that they start doing is they start building up their reputation, building up their reputation. And you'll find mm -hmm. them, you know, they're all little bit, they're all like in a little group or something and stuff, mm -hmm. you know. And then they're all kind of like a uh, 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 tag on one, tag off on one another. Okay, you go to church here. You know, then I'm going to go to church there. Then you come behind me and go to that same church. And, and so they started like a little cult almost mm -hmm. and stuff. Yep. Yeah. You know, and the thing is, is that once they start that cult, then it tells you that they had no vision in the first place for you to have a right relationship with God. Right. They never had a desire to preach the true gospel of Jesus to help build a, a thirst and a hunger for the truth of God because you're always uplifting Jesus. See, Amen. when you're always uplifting Jesus, a person that really loves God, they're going to get more hungry. The more you talk to about Jesus, the more they want to eat. Amen. The more they want to find out about the Lord it's true. and stuff. It's, true. it's, it's true. what they want to do. Right. See, true. but when you are in these big old mega churches and all of that, you don't get to know anybody. See, mm -mm. 
right. You know, they think, I guess, when they get to heaven, you know, a lot of them ain't going to make it, though. Yeah, that's true. A lot right. of them ain't going to make right. it. Yeah. Right. See, because a lot of people think they're going to heaven. They ain't going to heaven. Right. Jesus said, many will say to me in that day in Matthew 7, yes. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and cast out devils in your name and done many mighty works in your name? And Jesus said, depart from me. That's right. I right. never knew you. Right. You know, Amen. think about the disdain that was in the heart of Jesus to have to tell somebody that. Right. All because they were standing up there lying to him to his face. Mm -hmm. We did all this stuff, see? See, the thing, the problem with these type churches and stuff and these type people, they think the stuff that worked on earth are going to work in heaven when they get there. Mm -hmm. They think when they see Jesus that what was acceptable on the earth in their mind is acceptable to him. Jesus said, no, 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 no. I don't even know you. Right. He says, you're not holy. You're not righteous. You're not walking. You didn't walk in doing this of life because if you did, I would know you. Right. That's but true. he said, you weren't doing that, so I have no idea who you are. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. And see, these people, you know, see, churches, they meet for the very wrong reason. It is not to grow your faith. It is not you know, to offer up salvation, true salvation to the lost. Right. It's all about entertainment. It's all right. about name recognition and building, you know, my little kingdom and all of this stuff. And it has nothing to do with Jesus. Right. I'm not lying. I mean, since we moved back up here, I have not been to one church where Jesus was Lord. Right. Right. Not yeah. one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where Jesus was Lord. You can tell when Jesus is Lord of a place by the people that go there. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You've been able to tell it, see? Because when those disciples followed Jesus, they did what? Ended up, their ministry ended up what? Just like him. Right. That's right. Amen. Just like him. And they did they weren't even looking for no other Lord and no other Savior. Right. See? That's right. Yeah. They were only looking to please the Lord and to do his will. And the thing about it is, if you notice in scripture, everywhere Jesus went, they went with him. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Everywhere he went, they went with him. Right. Now, right. think yeah. about it. A lot of people want to go to these different juke joints and, and other uh, heinous places, you know, prostitution houses and all of this stuff, but they want to leave Jesus back in somewhere. Mm -hmm. A little tent. Oh, sweet Jesus. Hey, Jesus. You know, I love you, don't you? Hey, Jesus. And Jesus said, you stupid or something, ain't you? <laughs> he said, who do you think you're talking to? See, the thing that, that bothers me more than anything about the treatment of my Lord is Uh, Joe or your regular Tom, Dick, and Harry. He is not even flesh, bone, and blood. Even though Jesus came as that, right. he's not that now. Right. Yes. See? And you cannot worship God in spirit and in truth if you're not spiritual minded or spiritually born. Right. 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 You can't do it. Yes. Right. See, true. you can do, you know, trying to look at somebody, trying to worship God in the flesh, but calling it the spirit, it's like a man trying to act like a woman. Right. I mean, really, right. look, how stupid does it look when you see a man in high heels with red lipstick on, talking about, hey, yeah. trying to act like a woman. A man can never be a woman. Right. right. Never. Right. There ain't no way that's ever going to happen, right. and a woman right. can never be a man and right. stuff. See, right. that's right. And that's just, and that's just about how bad it is when a person is trying to say, "Oh, I'm worshiping God in the spirit," but it's nine hundred percent flesh. Right. Ain't nothing spirit. See. Right. And when you look at the spirit and compare it to the flesh, they don't look nothing alike. Right. They look nothing alike. A person walking in the spirit and a person walking in the flesh. A person walking in the spirit is 100 and 900 
a thousand percent content with their relationship with God. Right. 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 Because he's the only somebody that they're seeking. Right. He's the only somebody that they're serving. He's yes. the only somebody that they call Lord and Savior. Yes. They're not looking yes. to have favor with man at all. Amen. Right. See? Yes. But now right. on the other side of the spectrum, you've got somebody trying to claim to be spiritual. But every time you turn around, they doggone, but they, they come kissing up to the preacher so bad it ain't even funny. That's right. The preacher tell them, okay, I, you know, if, if he take a right turn, something going to get broke. See? <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you. That's right. These yeah. people, they, 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 they look for fame. They look at people that they deem famous and all of this stuff, you know, and they substitute a right relationship with God in order to follow men because they're actors, they're athletes, and all this stuff, see? I mean, I'm out here building a mailbox. I guess it's still up there. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody knocked a mailbox down the other day. Mm. So, I'm not by the road. Carrie, <laughs> you okay? It's still up there, Carrie. <laughs> you might always have to be careful with you. <laughs> so, I'm up there, you know, and... And I'm, you know, I put my mailbox and I bet, you know, and, and really, you know, when I'm when I'm doing stuff, I spend out in the yard, you know, and I'm by, I'm by myself. I'm, I'm content. I'm a real content person. So, and really, I don't like to be bothered, to tell you the truth. <laughs> so I'm up there doing the mailbox, and so I'm my way up in my little cart thing, my little my lawnmower thing. I see this car put this turn signal on, but then they keep driving by. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I didn't think of what it was. I said I thought I was gonna turn down there somewhere. So I'm doing the mailbox and all of a sudden this man pulls up in the driveway over here. And uh, you know, I'm thinking, what does he want? So he gets out and he said, oh, I'm a, I'm a so, 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 and all that and all. You know, and I just wanted to, to see if I could just get you to uh, uh, autograph this are baseball card me? for my grandkid. I meant to tell you that. Oh so I could do get this autograph for my grandkid. I said, sir, I said, I don't do that anymore. I said, I haven't done that in over 30 years. I said, I don't do autographs and stuff anymore. And um, well, you know, I, I just wanted to check and I, I just wanted to to you know just to just to see if you would do it. I had looked and I had seen that there hadn't been much done lately, see, because I haven't done it in about 30 years. You know, when I finished playing baseball, I finished with playing baseball. Right. Yeah. I was through with that. So, right. You know, yeah. and my life ain't about that at all anymore. Mary would tell you this stuff. You know, mm -hmm. you know, people have, have have offered thousands of dollars for me to sign an autograph. I'm not doing it. See, mm -hmm. I left that. See, and it's like I said before. You know, if I was a bus driver, ain't nobody you know Don't coming out by. here. You know, talking about when I worked in manufacturing, ain't nobody want to have nothing to do with me. You know, because to them, that's like a low life job. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not, you know, you're supposed to be one of these society people and all of this stuff, you know. And so, and so the thing is, is that, okay, this man stopped by, he drove from somewhere in Alabama. You know? Are you serious? Yeah, he drove a distance. And, you know, and his grandson, I guess, lived down here. Uh, his, his grandson lived down here somewhere with his parents, of course. And, um, and so he come down all the way down here for that, you know. To try to get an autograph with that. And then see the thing that bothers me most is people just show up at your house. Right. That's mm -hmm. true. Right. Exactly. Easter's is for the children. Easter's is for the children. You know, and when they want an autograph, it's for my grandson. See? They blame yeah. everything on the kids and stuff. <laughs> you know, they, they do all this stuff. I mean, just flat out lie and all of this stuff. You know, but you don't find people going from house to house saying, you know. You know, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a born again believer and I want to share Jesus Christ with right. you. Right. You don't have people doing that. No. But they have no problem, you know, and they're actually so motivated to do it that they'll do it without even, you know, by disrespecting you. I put it that way. Yeah. Because to me, that's real disrespectful. Right. You're going to show up at my house and stuff, you know, unannounced, you know, and not even give me the opportunity to tell you, just go ahead and stay where you're at because I'm not into that anymore and stuff. You know, so, 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 you know, people love their pet peeves and they love their little things that they want to do or whatever. But when it comes to Jesus, they're going to thumb their nose at him because they don't want you talking about him. How can you tell me what to believe? You know, who do you think you are? 
Oh, in all this stuff. And see, the thing about it is, you know, about everybody that 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 knew me or knows me as a ball player, they know that I preach now. Mm -hmm. See, because I don't hide it from anybody. You know, there's a a a, 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 a professional, I guess, baseball thing, a, a group on it and stuff, and I post on that too. I don't post about, well, you know, I played in baseball in 1980. No, no, no. We're talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the word, see? Amen. The thing is, is that, you know, they cannot understand how you can love somebody so much that they become everything, yeah, you true. know, in your life. Right. You know, yeah. such as Jesus becomes yeah. everything in your life. Mm -hmm. And you know what they think? You crazy. Yeah. <laughs> they think something wrong with you, see? Yeah. And the reason I was pointing out the fact about, you know, the, the house church or whatever is, you know, I had somebody, uh, they said, well, we used to listen to you on the radio and stuff and, uh, and uh, you know, and stuff, is that God can't do nothing in these places here. Right. See? He can't, that he can't even do that. See, this is the mentality that the devil has been able to purport on people because they're too stupid to read their Bible and find out what God said. Right. And all it tells you is that people are more into form and tradition than they are into the truth. Right. See, I don't care if, if, a, if a preacher is preaching the gospel and if he's got a toilet big enough for me to go in, I'm going to hear it. Yeah. See, I don't really care. See, the thing is that when you are in right relationship with God and when your heart is in the right place, all you want is Him. Amen. Amen. You don't want anything else. All you want is Jesus. Amen. And you don't want to hear no googly God. Amen. You don't want to hear no trash, True. you know, Amen. and no junk in True. church and all of that, see? You know, and most of these churches, they could be, you know, I tell you what, Red Fox could uh, 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 could have doggone uh, be in those churches because they all like junkyards. See? They never give you anything of real substance to cause you to have a hunger for Jesus to where you seek him with your whole heart. Amen. See? Amen. That's what you want to do if you're a child of God. Amen. You're hungry for the Lord. You're yes. thirsty for Jesus. Amen. You can't do without him. You yes. want to be in his presence every Amen. second of the yes. day. Hallelujah. Yes. See? Yes. You want to be in God's presence. Amen. See? Yes. Everything else other than that is foolishness Amen. to you. Amen. It was foolishness to Jesus, and it ought to be foolishness to you. See? Amen. Jesus didn't like them, put up with that stupid that they were doing, you know, in the in the temple and stuff. Okay. Gathering in the name of God, but yet in their buying and selling and all of this stuff. Yeah. <coughs> what did Jesus do? He said, okay, you boys want to do that? He said, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Got him a whip of cords. Okay. Went up in the temple. Run everybody out. Right. And say, look, this is my father's house. You've made the dead of things. Right. right. He says, I'm not happy about that. We want this place as you call it, see? As you call it. They call it the temple. See? He said, and you use it as a place that you say is for God. That is the temple of the Lord, of the house of God and stuff. And he says, so I'm here to do what's supposed to be done. In what even you call the house of God. Right. Right. See, right. I'm going to lift up the name of my father. Right. I'm going to heal. I'm going to deliver. And I'm going to set the captives right. free. Right. Ain't that why he came? Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. Jesus didn't come to be nobody's buddy. Right. He right. came to do the will of the father. Amen. Right. Yes. And he said, look, you can't love your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, or anybody more than you love me. That's he right. said, if you do, you ain't worthy of me. That's right. right. See, anything you put before the Lord. Jesus said, you ain't worth me. You're not worthy of me. Right. That's right. And people seem like they have a hard time uh, realizing Jesus will rebuke liars, deceivers, and, re and hypocrites. Amen. Right. See? Amen. They think Amen. he won't rebuke them. Yeah. He did it in Matthew 23. Amen. Blind guys, open sepulchers, whitewashed tombs, children of the devil. See, that's what Jesus said about the Pharisees. Yes. Yeah. And he said it about a lot of people today, but they don't tune him out because they don't want to hear that. Right. See? They will. Mm -hmm. See, the yeah, thing about true. it is, is that God gave us a will that if we want to serve him, we can serve him with our whole heart. Amen. That's true. If we want to play game, we can play game. He'll let you do that too. Yeah. See? But the thing yeah. is, is that God gave you two options. He so he told you that there were two places that you could go. 
See? Mm -hmm. Two Amen. places. Yeah. Turn to Matthew chapter 7. Mm -hmm. In verse 7 it says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Mm -hmm. Knock and it shall be open unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. Mm -hmm. See? He's in eight, yeah. seven. No, Matthew 7, seven. Verse, uh, verse 8. Eight. He says, For everyone that asketh receiveth, mm -hmm. and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. There ain't a whole lot of people asking, there ain't a whole lot of people seeking, and there ain't no, no hardly nobody knocking. Right. See? Yeah. They're not doing that, see? Only people who are desperate for the truth and Amen. hungry for Jesus, they're going to do that, Amen. Right. see? They're going to want to see. They're going to want to find. They're going to be knocking, see? Right. And the thing about it is, you know, you can't just be knocking just to be knocking. You better have a purpose in mind when you knock. Right. Yes. See? Right. Because we're going to see in a little bit, you know, where the five foolish virgins and stuff, you know, they were told that the, 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 uh, 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 the, the, that the Lord was coming back and stuff, but yet they didn't pay too much attention. Oh, we got time. See? They, they was not prepared. No, that's right. And they have no, they didn't have any, uh, uh, um, any intent on being prepared. Right. Why? Because they were about their own business. Right. Yeah. They didn't care nothing about the Father's business. They had this stuff that they wanted to do. See? Because the Bible says that they didn't have any oil in their lamp. Mm -hmm. See? Think about that. No oil. Right. No spirit of God. No nothing of God at all. See? But yet they have plenty of opportunity to get it. See? Mm -hmm. But see, the thing about it is when you don't have a relationship with God, you will be very easily to deceive, be very easily deceived into believing a lie. See? Right. Anything that That's sounds true. good, you're going to latch on yep. to it. See? Yep. Yep. Especially when it doesn't convict you, but yet it just kind of placates you and say the way you're living is okay, even though you're not living for the Lord. Right. See, right. Even though you're not living for the Lord. So, so the thing is, is that, you know, when the Bible says all that good stuff you did up front, he said that ain't going to look, that ain't working. Yeah, he said all of it going to be forgotten. Yep. Yeah. Every bit of it, see. Because if what God is saying, it's not how you begin the race, it's how you end the race. See? It's how you end the race. If you don't end the race, you know, pursuing Jesus and living for God and honoring and glorifying the Father, you know, the Bible says that all that good stuff you did for them 30 years, it ain't remembered. See? Think about this. You can walk with the Lord for 50 years and go back to sin. And everything you did in the name of the Lord for 50 years, it's all forgotten. Right. right. It is not remembered. Right, see? Right. It's not remembered. God judges you for who you are at that moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. See? So that ought to tell you something. You know, if if you can do all of this for 50 years and then lose it all in a matter of minutes and stuff, that tells you that every second of your life, you ought to be walking with the Lord. Or you better be making sure that you're walking with the Lord. See? Right. Right. Because what you did five seconds ago don't mean nothing if what you did for uh, four seconds, or five, that five seconds rather, was not in the Lord and stuff and you went back, you're you going to die and go to hell. Mm -hmm. right. Think about it. You know, the Bible says that it's been appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. Right. And nobody knows the day or the hour when Jesus is coming back. That's right. Now there is a second coming of Jesus. Mm -hmm. yeah. But there's also a Jesus that will come back for you right now. Right. Yeah. See? And take you out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What did God say to those, to those people in 2 Thessalonians? He said, because you did not have the love of the truth, he says... God sent them what? Strong delusion. Why? That they all might be damned. Yes. For your demise. Right. All because God is fed up with your lying and with your deception and the people that you have led astray and you had no love for God's word, meaning you had no love for Jesus. So God says, I'm sending you a strong delusion so that your soul might be damned. Is what he said. God says, I'm sending it to you so you can go to hell. Mm -hmm. 
I'm sending it to you so that you can fall in love with this lust and with this perversion that you have. Why? That's what you want. I'm letting you have what you want. That's see? true. That's true. That's what God is saying. Mm -hmm. See? In the first chapter of Romans, he turned them over to a reprobate mind because they wanted to do what? Perversions. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They wanted to sin and they loved their sin and stuff. And whatever you love, God will let you have it. Right. It doesn't matter what it is. He will let you have what you want because he's already told you about the straight and the narrow that we're going to read about here in a second. Right. See? Yeah. He has given you truth. He has given you his son that represented everything that there is to represent about truth. Right. Right. He's given them to you. Yeah. See? Right. For free. Right. And all you've got to do is surrender your will and your life to him, repent of your sin, and believe the gospel. And God says, all your sins, I've forgiven them. I've washed them away, and I'm not going to remember them anymore. Amen. Yeah. See? Yeah. When you remember your sin, if you're a believer now, it's because you're remembering it. God didn't bring it back up. Right. He yeah. forgot it. Right. If God says, I forgot it, he forgot it. Remember, he can't lie. Right, that's right. So he, yeah. he said, Look, I forgot all of that. Yeah. You know, and I'm guaranteed that sometimes God will be looking at you like, What are you talking about? See? Yeah. The thing yeah. is, is that yeah. God could never really be your God and your father if he always brought up stuff that you did. Right. Mm -hmm. See? That's right. He wouldn't be your father. Because right. God is not interested in you going back, God is interested in you continuing forward. Right. Yeah. Amen. And that's what his focus is in your life is for, to help you to continue in the word of God, to help you continue in the faith. See, why would God go back, remind you of the back when he has given you the Holy Spirit, when he has given you his word, when he has given you his son, Jesus, as a witness and as a testimony. Right. And then when he's given you also the apostles as a physical witness as to the power of the word of God and the power of faith in the life of somebody who believes. Right. See? Amen. 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 He gives you all of that. He says, I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. So if you're a believer, there's no lack in your life when it comes to the things of God. Right. Right. When it comes to living a holy and a righteous life, there is nothing that you lack that you can't do that through Christ. Amen. 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 There's nothing. Yeah. There's nothing that nobody yeah. can do anything, you know, to keep you from doing God's will. If you set your heart and your mind on doing the will of God, can't nobody stop you, not even the devil. Right. That's right. That's right. See? That's Nobody. Yes, Nobody yes. can stop you. See? But the thing is, is that you're going to have to choose. Amen. You're going to have to decide what you want to do with your life. Do you want to trade it in for eternity and a life with Jesus and let him have full control? Because yes. look, you can't claim that you gave your life to Jesus if you only gave him 5%. Right. right. Or even 90%. See? Because let me tell you something. You know, it didn't take 10% when you weren't saved to screw up your life. Right. It didn't take 10%. It took like a, a 0.1% of 1%. Right. See? Right. Yeah. You know, you didn't even have to work at screwing up your life because it came natural. Mm -hmm. Because of the sin nature yeah. that you had. That's true. Yeah. You had that sin nature and stuff. And so you didn't have to work hard at, at, at that, you know. Mm -hmm. you know. You you know, and think about how dumb we were, you know, when we would do something and we feel bad. I mean, yeah. you know, it's like going out partying all night, you know, and then you stay in bed till 12 o'clock the next day because you're feeling bad. And when you get up, you start throwing up. See? Mm. But guess what? You go right back and do the same right thing back. the next night. Yep. Yeah. See? How stupid is that? Dumb. That don't make a whole lot of sense. You know? Yeah. It's like, you know, when at least, you know, when you're a child of God and you make a mistake, you know, you don't Purpose in your heart, I'm going to go back and do it again. Your purpose in your heart, I ain't doing that no more. And you figure out what the scripture says that you need to do in order to be set free from that for good. Right. See? Right. See, when God sets you free, God ain't setting you free temporarily. Right. He's doing it for good. Amen. Right, right. Because there's no way yeah. if that was not the heart of God that he wouldn't have that in mind. If he, if, if he put in scripture that if a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Right. Old things have passed away. All things are new. All things are of God. So when God saves you and when God delivers you, he is doing it forever. Amen. See? Amen. Forever. See? 
And the thing is, he said, look, you're going to be tempted, you're going to be tested, you're going to be tried. But he said, look, I've given you my son, and I've given you my spirit, see? Yes. And you're an overcomer because of my son, see? Amen. So the thing is that, you know, people will, man, I had the worst thought. I can't believe I had that thought. I have thoughts that I can't believe that I had. Mm -hmm. And I can't, I don't even understand where they came from, see? Yes. That's right. but, 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 but the thing is, is that, look. It, because I get a thought, that doesn't mean it came from me or that I'm only that thought right. when it's a sinful thought. Right. Right. Casting all your cares upon Jesus for he cares for you. Right. Cast down every high imagination that exhausts itself against the word of God. In other words, when that thought comes, get out of my, get, get out. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. See? Right. Yes. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. Father, I love you. I thank you. And I praise your holy name. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our glory. When you start getting that kind of mess, start coming and attacking you or whatever, just start praising the Lord. Amen. Start Amen. calling upon the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. See? Just call on the name of the Lord and stand on what you know the Bible says. See? Yeah. See, Jesus has delivered me from all sins, from all unrighteousness. See? The devil has nothing in me. See? What the Bible says, I give you power to trade on serpents and scorpions over all powers of the enemy or the devil, and nothing shall by enemies harm you. Right. See? That is real. Amen. That Amen. is from God, and that is for everybody sitting in this room and everybody that's listening to me if they are truly a child of God. Amen. See? <coughs> the devil ain't got nothing in you. Nothing whatsoever. But the thing is that people allow him to lie to them and they receive it. Right. Mm -hmm. When the devil tempted Jesus mm -hmm. in the wilderness and God led him up there to be tempted or the Holy Spirit led him up there to be tempted. Now, when the devil said, I'm going to give you all of this and I'm going to give you all of that, Jesus would say what? It is written. Right. It is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou worship. Yes. Need not one time did Jesus dwell on what the devil was putting up there and offering him? Right. Right. He said what he was going to say. He defeated it by the word of God. And so eventually what happened? The devil left. Yeah. yeah. If the devil had so much authority, why couldn't he make Jesus accept that stuff? Right. Why couldn't he make Jesus do this? Why couldn't he make Jesus do that? Because he couldn't. Right. Jesus had all power on earth, above the earth, and beneath the earth. Mm -hmm. Right. And the devil had the power on the earth or whatever, mm -hmm. over sinners. Right. See, devil doesn't have any power over any believer. Right. That's right. No power whatsoever. Right. True belief. And the reason that 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 uh that people don't walk in that power and walk in that authority because mm -hmm. most people don't have a relationship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. All they have is this vision of this other Jesus. Mm -hmm. This another Jesus, another gospel. And it's not one, you know, that is truth and righteousness and stuff. And that gospel that is not of God, it has no teeth whatsoever. Right. right. You know, when you, you go out there barking at somebody, you gumming them to death. Yeah. <laughs> See? You got no teeth. You got, oh, my, 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 my. You ain't biting nobody. They were sitting up there laughing at you. I'm telling you, I'm just busting the gut. I mean, he laughing so hard and so loud, he getting cramps everywhere. Yeah. See? Because you just really gave him a big laugh today, mm -hmm. claiming that you knew Jesus and had nothing in you that said that you knew him. See, right. because what people need to understand is the devil knows the people that are of God yes. and he knows the one that are yes. not. Right. Remember when the seven sons of Siva yeah. went and tried to cast yeah. out the devil mm -hmm. or whatever, and the devil told them, say, look, don't even come up here trying to offer that mess up to us. You don't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. They said, Paul we know and Jesus we know. They said, but who are you? See? You know, they said, no, we don't know y'all. You ain't got no power. You ain't got no authority. So what did they do? The devils jumped on them, beat them, and they all ran off naked. Yeah. See? And this is what happens when people try to claim something in the name of Jesus that has no relationship with you. You already have no relationship with them, brother. You already defeated even before you get started. Yeah. That's right. See? That's right. Even before you get yeah. started, see? Yeah. Jesus yeah. said, my sheep know me and I know them. Right. See? Amen. And the devil knows the sheep of Jesus. Jesus as well. Why? Because everything that they do is going to be done to the glory of God. Amen. They're going to Amen. seek first the kingdom of God Amen. and all of His righteousness. Amen. They're going to do His will and serve His purposes. They're going to surrender themselves in order that Jesus might be Lord over their lives. And stuff. Everything about their lives, you know, is centered in Jesus Christ. Everything. Amen. Not Amen. just some of it. Everything. 
thing. Amen. And if your life is not uh, uh, truly committed in Jesus, everything about your life, you don't belong to him. Right. You don't belong to him. Mm. You don't belong to him. So let's let's finish reading this over here in Matthew chapter 7. Uh, <clears throat> let me write this down right quick. And so in verse 9 it says, Of what man is, is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will, be, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? Mm. If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts, unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? See, now notice he said Father. Mm -hmm. So he's talking to those who are his. Right. He's not talking to unsaved people. He's talking to his children that when you ask your Father for a certain thing, your Father is going to give you this certain thing. Right. See? Because if you walk in with him, you're going to ask that which is of his will. Right. That's what you're going to do. You're not going to ask for anything outside of God's will. Right. right. Because right. even when you right. when you fix your mouth to get ready to ask something out of God's will, you stop because you know that that's not God's will and that's not what you want. Right. And that's not what God is going to answer. Right. See, he's not going to answer that the way he would normally answer it because you know, you're trying to do something, asking for something that there's no way in Hades that he's going to give it to you because it's not according to his will. Right. See, we as believers must live and walk according to the will of God. Right. Amen. That's what we're supposed to do. Yep. So in verse 13, and this is and everything I'm reading, this, these are Jesus' word. Everything I'm reading. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and narrow, broad. and broad is the way, that leadeth to destruction. And listen to what he said. And many there be which go in thereat. Mm -hmm. See? Now think about it. You've got people that Jesus described to them about the broad way. See? And really, you know, they didn't even have to have him to do that because when they heard him preach the truth, they knew what was on the broad way. Right. Yeah, right. Because the straight and the narrow is very straight and very narrow and very confined and defined. Right. See? Yeah. Because Jesus says very specifically what is acceptable of God and what is God's will. You know, when he was preaching the gospel and as he lived and walked on the earth. See? And his disciples, you know, continued in the word and they continued with him. See? And like I was saying earlier, as I was saying earlier, that Jesus had to take them everywhere with him. Right. Because they had to know everything that he knew because they were to tell the people what? Everything that they have, that he told them. Right. Everything that they saw him do. Everything that they heard him say. See, right. they had to know what they needed to preach and what they needed to teach. See, right. And that's why it was so important for them, you know, when Jesus went away, you know, when he uh, uh, was buried and, and then resurrected, it was important for them once he went to be with the Father to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Right. 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 See, to yeah. be filled with the Holy Spirit. It was important for them, see, because he was going away, but before he left, he had to make sure that he gave them everything that they needed, see, right. because he had to give them everything that pertained to life and godliness as well in regard to the ministry. Right. See? Because people had to hear what Jesus said through them. Right. See? Right. Yeah. And when they spoke the things that Jesus spoke, the people go, oh yeah, they've been with they Jesus. See? Right. They, uh, they identified with, they understood it yeah. because they didn't preach or teach or do anything that Jesus didn't do right. or that Jesus didn't preach. See? Because they would tell people in a heartbeat, we preach Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. We preach Christ and him crucified. Mm -hmm. see? Yes. And see, why is it that these preachers nowadays think that it's up to them to decide what people need to hear? Mm -hmm. see? Mm -hmm. It's up to them. You know, they're not, you know, seeking after the face of the Lord. Right. What did Jesus say? Okay, now, he said when he preached the gospel, he said when he preached it, I told you of them what my father told me. Right. Amen. Yeah. When I hear my father say, that's, that's what right. I'm saying. When I see my father do, that's, that's what I'm doing. Amen. See? That's and we're no different. But if you're not seeking first the kingdom of God, you're not going to be like that. Right. Yeah. See, you're not going to be finding out, you know, what God had to say. 
Because seeking first God's kingdom is seeking first God himself. That's right. Amen. See? Yep. God is his kingdom. Right. See? Yeah. He is his kingdom. See? Jesus is the kingdom. Why? Jesus came as God in the flesh. Right. Mm -hmm. Is what the Bible says. Yeah. See? So the thing is that Jesus wanted to us to specifically understand, and he wanted his disciples to specifically understand that I say nothing of myself, only what my father tells me and only what my father shows me. That's the only thing that I'm doing. See? Right. Yeah. And let me tell you something. You shouldn't be worrying about what other people think about you right. or what other people say about you. Right. Because yeah. Jesus tried to make it very clear that it only mattered what the father right. thought. Right. right. That's the only thing that matters. Yeah. What the father thought. I wasn't worried about what the deacon said. I'm not worried about what the preacher said. I'm not worried about what my grandma said or my grandpa said and stuff. About going, oh, I've been in this church 50 years and you need to try to get involved like we did. No, you not be led by men. You ought to be led by the Spirit. Amen. Right? Amen. You ought to be led by the Spirit of God. Your grandmama don't tell you how to serve God. Right. Your grand your grandpa pa don't tell you how to serve God. Mm -hmm. Not even your preacher tells you how to serve God. Right. Because the Bible tells you exactly how you need to live and how you need to walk as a child of God. Right. See? Right. And he said, I gave you my spirit, the spirit of truth, that's going to help you to understand and know what you need to do, what you need to say, where right. you need to go. Right. See? So he equipped us with that. So we don't have to put no confidence in man. That's right. We don't have to put any confidence, rather, in man because we've been commanded not to. Right. And Jesus didn't say, well, if he's a preacher, that's okay. No, he didn't say that. Mm -hmm. He said, put no confidence in man. Right. Any fleshy person, don't put confidence in him and stuff. Because why is that? Because Jesus died to have complete control of that's your right. life. Right. True. Yes. And when you repented of your sin, you told him you can have complete control. That's right. I surrender, Lord. I'm giving you everything, you know, uh, about my life. I want you to take control of it. I want you to have it and stuff, see? And the thing about it is when we continue to seek the Lord or whatever, our eyes are always going to be on right. him. It's going to be on him and stuff, right. see? So in verse 14, it says, <clears throat> because straight is the gate and narrow. Everybody can identify with narrow. And narrow or difficult is what that word means. Narrow is the way which leadeth unto what? Life. Mm -hmm. And few there be that find it. Few there be that find it. There's not going to be a lot of people going to heaven. That's true. There's not. That's true. Jesus just said that broad is the way. He said there's a whole bunch of people going that way. And when you're looking, when you're talking about the broad way, you're really talking about the world. Right. The things that are of the world, in right. the world and of the world, right. is what he's talking about. And what does he tell you in First John? He says, you know, he says, come out from, uh, not, not, not that one, not that script, that's in, uh, in First and Second Corinthians. But he says, love not the world, right. neither the things that right. are in the world. That's in First John. Yep. I think it's chapter 5. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. That's right. For all that is in the world is what? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. See, None of that stuff is acceptable to God. None of it. See, But Jesus said there are a lot of people out there, that's exactly what they want. See, They walk and follow after the lust of their flesh. The pride of life. They want to be uh, rich and they want to make, you know, have all these nice things and these fine things. And nothing's wrong with that, but don't let those things pursue you. That's right. See? That's right. That's right. The more you look at it, the greater the lust grows. Yep. See? The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. See? Yep. All of those things that are of the world. And they're no way going to make it into. The straight and the narrow. Right. The straight and the narrow commands that we live holy and righteous before God. Right. The straight and the narrow commands that we walk in the light as Jesus is in the light. The straight and the narrow demands that we live as he lived and walk as he walked. Right. Always seeking first the kingdom. Always doing the will of God is what, is what the straight and the narrow means. Because Jesus said it leadeth unto life. Yeah. Now listen to me. In John 14, 6, Jesus says, 
I am the way, right. the truth, and what? The life. I'm the life. Right. I am the life. So the thing is, is that following the straight and the narrow means you're going to be following Jesus. Right. Yeah. You're going to be following him. Yeah. Because he says that it leads to life. It leads to him. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. It leads to Jesus. To love him, to serve him, to obey him, and to seek after him. See? Yeah. Nobody's going to walk in the straight and the narrow if they're not pursuing the Lord. That's right. That's because true. he says that few that be that what? Find it. Right. right. See? And nowadays, nobody's looking to find Jesus. No. They're not looking to find Jesus. No. They're looking to what? Ridicule him. Revile him. Reject him. Yeah. Be ashamed of him. Yeah. That's what they're looking to do. See? Looking for any avenue where they can remain in the broad way that leads to death. See? Thinking in their mind just because they're being like everybody else. See? See, this is the mistake a lot of people make. Just because the majority says something doesn't mean that it's the best thing. It's not true. Amen. That's it doesn't mean true. it's the best thing just because everybody agrees with that. See? That's true. Yeah. Because we have a lot of people that agree with wrong. Right. Mm -hmm. You know? Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and believe it or not, you know, if the straight and the narrow is going to be few, those who believe in righteousness and holiness are going to be few. Yeah. See? There are not going to be many people doing that. Doing this, doing this what I'm talking about in their walking relationship with God. When you pursue Jesus, you'll forsake anything. I said Jesus was the truth and the life. He says, I am the life. But he also says, I am life. I am the life mm -hmm. and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And so the thing is, is that, is that if we're pursuing the Lord, we're pursuing God. Amen. Because yes. Jesus said, the Father and I are one. 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 Right. See? And the thing is that that's the whole purpose of Jesus coming as well. Not only just to save us and to deliver us, but to, to, to help us to become one yeah. with yeah. him. Amen. Yeah. One with him. Amen. See? And yeah. so... And so, uh, and so the thing is, is that in verse 15, it says, beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing. Those who are serving God, those who are the children of God. He says, they come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly, they are ravening wolves. Remember when, when, when God sent uh, Samuel to uh to Jesse's house, David's father. Mm -hmm. Send him to the, to his house, you know, to anoint the king. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so Samuel gets to David's house, I mean to uh, uh to Jesse's house, and he told him why he was coming, you know, and so he started asking him to send his sons one by one, you know, uh before before him so that he could pick the king. And so the first son he saw was the eldest son. And I think that's, so that's the way they were doing it from the eldest down to the youngest. Yeah. And so, so he said, he, so he looked at Eliab, which was his oldest son, and he said, uh, this has got to be him. This is what Samuel said. This has got to be him. Because Samuel is looking at how tall he is, mm -hmm. how muscular he looks, you know. Man, he just looks like, you know, he would make a good king and all of that, mm -hmm. see. But the thing was is that God wasn't looking mm -hmm at this to be the king. He was looking at, was looking at down yeah. in here, yeah. at the heart, as to what the king, or what yeah. king he was looking for, what they needed to be, see? Right. And really, you know, you find out later that God says, you know, that the man that he was looking for was somebody after his own heart. Right. Yeah. So, Samuel said, that's got to be him. God said, whoa, 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 hold up, Jack. That ain't him. <laughs> he said, that's not him. He says, because you look on the outward, mm -hmm. he said, but I'm looking at the heart. See? Amen. Because the eye of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Right. If a person, if you want to hear what's in a person's heart, just stand around and listen to them mm -hmm. talk for a little it's bit. Right. Right. And you'll find out everything that's, that's about. Mm -hmm. You know, and some people, you know, they're not even smart enough to realize they shouldn't say anything. <laughs> <laughs> some folks should just be quiet their whole life. You know, 
<laughs> unless they get born again, you know, and, and then they, they, they give their life to the Lord and let God lead and teach and guide them and stuff. And let the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit convict them of stuff, see? Right. I mean, I'm honest. There have been people that I've been around and I'm just saying to myself, I wish they would please just shut up. I said, because... <laughs> They're just really just showing everybody how stupid they are. You know how some people talk so much sometimes you get embarrassed for them? Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, you just, oh, man, you just feel so bad. It's just, please hush, hush. You're just making it worse, you know. <laughs> and, and, but, you know, I don't know what they, why they're going to listen to me when they ain't be listening to nobody else tell right. me hush. Right. You know, the best friend say, Jimbo, you need to quit, man. You need to hush. Man, I got more I need to say. <laughs> you know, keep digging. Keep digging, yeah. I mean, it's just crazy and stuff, you know. And the Bible talks about being slow to speak and quick to hear, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's something I've been praying about a lot lately. I mean, for the last few months and stuff, you know. Because, you know, the Bible says this about our mouth. It says, life and death mm -hmm. are in the power of your tongue. Right. See? Yeah. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Think about what you say, you know. And, and a lot of times when you say stuff, you know you should not have said anything. Right. You should have been like the person I was just talking about. Oh, you had some. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, really, sometimes it is good to just be quiet and not say something. And you know, like the old saying goes, and that you open your mouth and you just remove all doubt. You know, yeah. that you're an idiot. You know, and stuff. And sometimes when, when you don't say stuff, people don't know what you're thinking. Right. You know, they don't even know the kind of person you are if they've never been around you and all of that, see? But for simply because God says so, to be slow to speak and quick to hear. Because a lot of people have destroyed people's lives by what they told them or yeah. what they said yeah. about them yeah. and stuff, you know? And so the thing is, is that if your heart is right, then what comes out of your mouth is going to be right, right. see? Yeah. And the thing is, is if God has control of your heart, then God will have control of your mouth. Because right. you surrendered that to him and stuff. You know, and because God tells us, God tells us that no man can tame the tongue. Mm -mm. You right. can't tame your tongue. And James it says you can't tame your tongue. Mm -mm. See, mm -mm. the only way we're going to be able to tame our, tame our tongue is when we're surrendered to God and we're allowing Jesus to be Lord over that. Right. And see, and that's the thing. If Jesus is Lord, he's a Lord over everything in your life. Right. You know, you know what you hear, your mouth, all of that, see. Now, you get to choose what you hear, whatever, but he's going to tell you, no, that ain't what you ought to be listening to. Right. No, that ain't what you ought to be looking at. You shouldn't be going over there doing that with them folks because you know every time you go over there, you know, they all end up in gossip and backbiting and all of that. So mm -hmm. he said, you need to stay around from away from those people. See, mm -hmm. the Bible says uh, bad morals will corrupt. Yes. I mean, bad behavior yeah. will corrupt good morals mm -hmm. is what it would do. See? So that's why God tells us that we need to separate ourselves from certain kind of people, you know, regardless of who they are, even family members, you yeah. know. So in, uh, in verse uh, 15 it says, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Verse 16, You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot, listen to what Jesus said, cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And why is that? It matters who you serve. Right. You're either serving God or you're serving the devil. Yeah. Right. Yep. You know, one of the two, and that's it. Just as Jesus talked about these two ways, the straight way and the narrow, I mean the narrow way and the broad way is what he was talking about, see? He wants you to understand that the broad way is not good. Mm -hmm. And don't think that just because you can do, that you are a do-gooder, you know, that you're going to go in the straight and the narrow. Right. No, because even out there in the broad way, there's a lot of deception, there's a lot of lies, there's a lot of counterfeit. You know, that makes you think that being a good person and doing good deeds is enough for God. Mm. Yeah. That ain't it. See, yeah. the Bible says that only them who do who endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Endure what? Doing the will of God. Because right. 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 Jesus said, my family are those who do the will of my father. Uh -huh. See, 
Those are the ones that are the children of God. Amen. Everybody that tries to call you brother or sister ain't your brother or sister. Right, you see? Right. They're not. See, right. Only those people that do the will of God right. are your brothers and are your sisters. See, Amen. And it used to bother me Amen. why people we, you know, didn't understand what it meant to be brothers and sisters in Christ. But now I got it. I got it. Because most of those people are not saved and they are not your brothers and sisters. Right. See? Yes. Because if they were truly children of God, it would be important to, for them to know who their family is. Right. And they would be right. seeking a family in God because everybody else, you had to let them go or they left you. Oh, because you're not like them anymore. Right. See? Right. You know when you are walking with the Lord because all of your old friends, yep. they let you go. Yep. Mm -hmm. They leave you. They don't want nothing to do with yeah, you and stuff right. like that. Yeah. And you continue yeah. doing God's will, and it's going to be that way the rest of your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, yeah. True. only yeah. the people that are going to genuinely love you, uh, if you're truly a child of God, are people that are just like you. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Those are the ones that are going to genuinely love you and stuff. Yeah. yeah. We don't have that. And as I've said yeah. many times before, we don't have that in the church, mm -hmm. in, the, in the modern day church. Yeah. You know, I can honestly say I believe we have it in our, in our, yes. in our family here. I can honestly yeah, say yeah. I believe we have that. Yeah. You know, because there's something about uh, uh, when you are truly in the Lord and you are truly, you know, in the presence of others that are truly in the Lord and stuff, you know, there is such a sense of the love of God for one another mm -hmm. and stuff. Right. I mean, you just have it. And it's not something that you got to... <clears throat> Let me see if I can conjure it up. You don't have to conjure it up. <laughs> see? Right. That's just who you are. Right. See? Right. That's just who you are. And if you tell people, you know, as I said before, a lot of people don't want to hear the truth. Yeah. You know, and, you, and they say, well, you know, yeah. you're my brother. You're my sister. No, I'm not. I see how you live. We have no relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not even cousins. Talking <laughs> 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 <Say that. laughs> about brothers and sisters, we ain't even cousins. We're not related at all. <laughs> well, but you're my cousin. No, I'm not. <laughs> I don't even know you. See, I don't even know you, so don't come around 8269 talking about talking that mess. See, the thing. Can I go? We're going to do something, bro. <laughs> but, but the thing is, is that, you know, I mean, honestly, in what I've been, we, I've been saved for 40 going on 43 years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and honestly this is the first time that I've ever felt like I genuinely have family members in right. Christ. Yeah. Amen. Wow. The first time Amen. honestly. Wow. The first time. I'm mm -hmm. serious. Mm -hmm. Been saved a long time and stuff and God knew my heart because that was something that was always important to me mm -hmm. when I first got saved. You know mm -hmm. and I couldn't understand why it was so hard for people who said they knew the Lord and loved the Lord and said they love you, mm -hmm. but they did never treated you like family. Yeah. Never treated you like family. And you never had that discernment, you know, because the Bible said you discern the spirits to see whether they be of God. And that's right. even people you go to church with. Right. See? And the thing is, I've never, I mean, this is it. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, this is it and stuff. Yeah. And, and the thing is that, you know, when you're with family, you don't have to worry about what you say and all right. of that stuff. Right. I mean, because you're not going to purposely say anything to offend one another anyway because you love each other too much. Right. Right. See? Right. And that's not according right. to God's word anyway. Yeah. Right. When the people got, when they got filled with the Holy Spirit in the fourth chapter, you know, I mean, the second chapter of, uh, uh, of Acts. Yeah. See, you know, and when, after Peter preached, immediately everybody became like a family. Right. See? Because what did they do? They saw family members had needs and what did they do? Those who had excess, they sold what they had, yep. put it at the feet of the apostles and they gave it to people as they had needs. Right. That's, right. That's, true. That's what they did. See, That is such a foreign thing today for others to give up what they have in order that their brothers and sisters may have what they need. See? Right. Yeah. I'm not talking about just dumping on stuff, people, what they want and all that. You know, you have to still be wise, you know, yeah. even in your giving and stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah. God don't want you throwing stuff down the rat hole. It's one thing to give people what they need, but it's another thing to pile stuff on them because you feel sorry for them or you want them, or you want to have favor with them. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And stuff oh, like that. Different. See, that's you know, different. that that's not God that's at all. Different. Because when you read it in the Bible, in the in, in Acts, it was all what those people needed. Yeah. See? Yeah. Now think about this. They had the need before they got there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They had the need way before they got there and stuff. But yet, nobody, you don't see it in the scripture where anybody was talking about doing anything for anybody. Mm -hmm. See? Yes. But the minute that those people that the that 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 Peter and the people in the upper room got filled with the Holy Spirit, and Peter started preaching the gospel. Mm -hmm. See, the Bible says that when Jesus baptized you in the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power. power. Right. 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 You shall receive power, and that power was evident on that day. Mm -hmm. You know, in particular, mm -hmm. because to me, it set the tone for everything that those disciples or those apostles would do after that. Right. See? Yeah. They were building God's kingdom. Right. That's and right. when those people got ministered to by people that they didn't even know. Mm -hmm. right. Because the Bible says they, they were they represent every nation and every tongue. Right. So in other words, they all spoke different languages and they were all from different parts, you know, of the country mm -hmm. and stuff. But yet, when the Spirit of the Lord manifested Himself, and the gospel was preached, that people gave get, that people gave themselves to the Lord and allowed the Lord to be Jesus to be their Lord and Savior and stuff. All of a sudden, everything changed. Yes, mm -hmm. everything changed. See, it was no longer just a bunch of people standing around, you know, looking at each other, looking funny, and all of that, trying to figure out what the other one was saying. You know, somehow miraculously, they understood one another because they had to in order to know what the needs were. Yeah. Right. See? Yeah. And yet, you know, God met the need, but the people really met their needs. You know, God met their needs through those people. That's See? Right. Right. They had to have ears to hear God say, okay, now that is your family. See? And so right. God didn't even have to tell them to find out what the needs were. They went and asked. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, okay, so you need such and such and such that, yeah. Um, you know, well, we've really been struggling, you know, because of whatever reason. Well, that's okay. You know, I got some stuff. I'll sell it and we can help you meet that need. That's you know? old land. They concern themselves yeah. with one another. Yeah. Yeah. That is not happening today. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. It only happens with people that they like. Mm -hmm. Their friends, their cliques, their families, or something mm -hmm. like that, or the preacher, you know, that—that mm -hmm. yeah. that ain't the way it works, man. Mm -hmm. That is not the kingdom of God mm -hmm. at all. Yeah, that is not the kingdom of God. When you love somebody, you know, and they're your family in Christ and stuff, everything about them concerns you. Right. That's right. You know, you may not ask everything, but you notice it everything. Right. See. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And God will tell you what to do. Right. You know, he'll tell you what to do because he knows that you're in love with him and you're in love with your family. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You know that, see? Right. Nobody has to tell you to do for your family. That's right. Even in your biological family, nobody has to tell you to do with your family. That's true. Right. Yeah. yeah. But how much greater and how much more would God have us to do for our family in him? That's right. See? Mm -hmm. Because in the biological family, you looked at things a certain way. In the family of God, you look at everything his way. Right, yeah. that's See? right. You looked at things through your own eyes and how you figured it out and all of this stuff, but now being led by the Spirit of God, you are led by what God sees. Yeah. See? Mm -hmm. Because what did Jesus say? I only do what I see my Father do. Mm -hmm. See? So there were things that God showed you in your spirit that he wanted you to do, and you just do it, see? Right. And the world, they don't understand that. That's right. Because look, you know, to us, we're family. Mm -hmm. To them, we're just Crazy. different people. Crazy. See? They don't understand that. Cray, cray, yeah. yeah we just <laughs> Jesus freaks. Yeah. Say again? We just Jesus freaks. You Jesus freaks and clowns or whatever they want to call you stuff, you know? But the thing is, is that your faith and your confidence is rested in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you don't care. And, and this is not being ugly or anything, but you don't really care or concern yourself when other people say, well, y'all are just a little bit over the top and you're just a little bit different. And, you know, if what you're doing going down there with them people, you know, y'all ain't got nothing in common. See, mm -hmm. 
I'm going to tell you, that's how people judge you. Yeah. They, you know, they look at you and they think, well, y'all ain't got nothing in common with them. How do they know? Right. We're not looking at the outward. We're looking at people's hearts. Right. And we're making decisions based on people's hearts, see? And God allows you to see people's hearts, see? Mm -hmm. And not only yes. that, he will yes. allow you to feel people's heart and stuff, see? But people that don't know the Lord and don't have right relationship with God, this is like a head scratcher two times over, see? Because it's not normal. It's not normal that you be friends with them. It's well, not normal that you that you uh, love them and that you, you know, would lay your life down for them. It ain't right. Y'all ain't got nothing in common. You know, why you like them so much better than you love me? Because you're a child of the devil and they belong to Jesus. Amen. 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 And you better believe I'm choosing them first. Amen. Amen. Them first, see? Amen. Over anybody Amen. that's of the devil. Amen. Right. See? Even family members. Yeah. See? Y'all yeah. closer yeah. than anybody I've ever <laughs> but see, but that you see the thing is, is that it all the root of it all is the love of God. Right. Amen. Right. It's right. His love. Yeah. Right. It's not ours. Right. You know, and I've said it. People say, Oh, well, I love you and I love you. No, you don't. No, you don't. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you don't know what love is. Right. right. Because yeah. what? The Bible yeah. says what? God is yeah. love. Yeah. See? So this love out here that y'all think y'all got, that ain't no love at all, see? Yeah. Because you weep one time and your love turns into lust and a heartbeat, mm -hmm. see? The love you're talking about, you know, you know when, they, when, they, when, they, when you see like a, 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 somebody telling you about a movie that they saw, well, you know, they making love. What is that? <laughs> they ain't making no love. They lusting, man. <laughs> and they're perverting is what they're doing and all of this stuff, see? Right. And it's an abomination to God. Well, you know, we've been living together for so long. Oh, yeah, and you call yourself something? Well, my husband is a deacon in the church. About the man I'm living with is a deacon in the church. Oh, really? <laughs> that says a lot about your church, see? That's why I call it the doggone mechanical church, <laughs> the modern-day church, yeah. the secret-friendly church, the oh, church that hates that. God, mm -hmm. see? You can't say you love God when you openly sin against him. Right. right. See? Right. You can't say you love God. You're lying right. if you do. Yep. Right. Oh, I love him. No, you don't. You're lying. You don't love, you don't even love yourself. Because mm -hmm. if you loved yourself, you would repent. Right. Because right. a person that you are living uh, right now going to hell. Right. See? So you need to get your heart right, man. You need to get your life right. If you're not loving Jesus, you don't know what love is, see? Mm -hmm. It's like I said earlier about, you know, when Jesus said, you know, none are good, no, not one. Only the Father is good. Right. Yeah. The Bible never says anything in Scripture about anybody being good. Mm -hmm. Because if he did, then he would be contradicting himself. Right. Yeah. So if ain't nobody good, and if you think you got some good, if you belong to Jesus, yeah, it's God's goodness, not yours. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got it from him. Every good gift and every perfect gift, what? Comes from God. Amen. That's what the Bible says, see? Yep. Comes from God, see? So when people, well, he's a good person. And, you know, and they get these folks up in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in these dead people, get them up in the church and go, oh, well, you know, he was such a servant of the, uh, of the community. He was a pillar in the community or whatever. And, uh, but the dude was a drunkard. Mm -hmm. The dude beat his wife. The dude beat his kids and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you think he going to heaven? Huh? No. no. Because God told him the kind of father he needed to be, but he couldn't be the kind of father he needed to be. Why? Because he did not have a relationship with Jesus. Right. See? And so those of you who have a relationship with Jesus, you're not skating your responsibility as a father according to God. Right. You're not skating your responsibility as a mother according to God or as a parent according to God. See? Because God tells you what you he commands you what you ought to do and what you ought to be as a parent and stuff. See? Right. See, you got parents. They're not interested in telling their kids about the Lord when God commands that you raise them in the things of God. Right. When you remind them of everything that God has done. See? Right. They don't think that they have to raise their children to know the Bible, to know the gospel at all. See? They don't think that, that, that that's their responsibility, even though God says it is. Right. See? They said, well, we'll just send them to church and, you know, and, and let the church teach them and let the church do this and let the church do that. They do not teach teenagers the Bible in churches. No. They don't teach them the truth. They don't teach them about Jesus and all of that. 
They tell them, oh yeah, just go up and do a human video and get in front of the congregation and wave your hand and get down on the floor and just cry and weep and cry and weep. And then after church is over, I go out in the parking lot. They're out in the parking lot about to suck each other's face off. Yeah. And just got standing up. Yeah, smoking cigarettes, smoking dope too. Yeah. See? Some of the worst kids in terms of character that I've seen go to church. Right. And the ones that are even worse than the ones that just go to church are pastor's kids. Oh, yeah. Some of the worst kids, see? But the thing is that everybody, every mama, every daddy is going to be held accountable yeah. as to why they did not do what God commanded them to do in regard to their children, in regard to their marriage and stuff. He's yeah. going to want to know. Yeah. You know, well, you know, it's like a 50% uh, divorce rate, you know, and well, you know, we just... Okay. You know, we just didn't have anything in common, see? And then, you know, and the people that normally say stuff like that are people who got married because of sex. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They had no emotional attachment to, uh, to one another other than a physical attraction toward one another, mm -hmm. see? And they think that that's the reason that you get married, see? The thing about it is, you know, that gets old. At some point, it becomes common, you know, especially, you know, when you're not married. It's stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, and then what do you start doing? Both of them start looking outside the relationship for somebody else to go sleep with. For somebody else to go shack up with. And yeah. stuff. And these preachers, a lot of these preachers don't think that that's a problem. Because a lot of them, they have, they have uh, members in their church that are in positions of authority. Yeah. Like a deacon or an elder and stuff. Out here sleeping and living with somebody, mm -hmm. and God says, if you are fornicator, which that's what that is, having sex outside of marriage with somebody you're not married to, you know, and so you're gonna think that there ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't no telling what kind of devils you got hanging out in your church yes, right. when yes. you got that going on, see? Right. Because that's an open door for the devil to come in and to do whatever he wants. And you know, the first place that he's gonna uh, uh, start maneuvering through the church. Adultery, fornication, homosexuality, and the acceptance of all of that. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the preacher ain't going to say nothing. The deacons ain't going to say nothing. Because really, lately, and a few years past, they're the very ones that have been involved in that story. Yeah. Yeah. I know two churches that we went to that that was the case. Mm -hmm. You got people in position of authority been sleeping with somebody else other than the wife. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when people are not surrendered and committed to God. That's what happens when the church itself, you know, is more important than God the Father or Jesus the Lord. Mm -hmm. See, so they don't do anything that's going to cause people to be drawn to the Lord. They're mm -hmm. going to do their will and they'll forget about whatever God's will is. That's it's true. Right. Okay, let me finish this so we can get through. But every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit, verse 19, is hewn down and cast into the fire. See, when you're not faithful to God, you're good for nothing. Right. This, this is what Jesus said. Yeah. And he said this more than one. Even John the Baptist said the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it ain't good for nothing but to be thrown in the fire and burn like trash. See? Mm -hmm. And what's the purpose of burning it? To get rid of it. Yeah. You know, to get rid of it. And so it says in verse 20, Wherefore by their fruits you shall know them. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father... Is it which is in heaven? These are the ones Lord, who say, "Lord, Lord, shall not it shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of the Father." When we do the will of the Father, that means all of God's will. You don't get to pick and choose what little bit you want to do and what little bit you don't want to do. Right. You know, the Bible says that 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 uh, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. So, in verse twenty-two. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto you, unto them rather, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So the thing is that people going to claim to know the Lord, but see, they have to remember Jesus is holy. Right. Yeah. He is God in the flesh. Right. He represents everything that the Father is. Yeah. And so he says that 
If you're not doing the will of my Father, see, and Jesus is making it evidently important that we understand we do the will of the Father, yes. right. see? And the Bible tells us that God is holy, right? Yes. So we have to walk in holiness. Yes. We have to walk in the likeness of God on, in our lives while right. we're on this earth, see? Yes. And Jesus said, it ain't about the works that you've done. It's not about the miracles that you've done and stuff. Because the Bible says the devil can do that too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's there's one that comes in the devil's name that do all of these these false miracles and stuff. And yet people think that anytime they see a miracle, it's got to be of God. No, the devil's a counterfeit. Right. right. He's a counterfeit. Yep. See? So the thing is, is that it is that it's not about what you do for you to satisfy you. Because when you brag about we've done this, we've done that, we've done that, all the reason you the only reason you do that is just so you can. Yeah. yeah. And then you wear your church's t-shirt so that everybody can so that you can let everybody know, ooh, this is my church. This, we serve it. We serve. <laughs> the Bible says you don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing and stuff. See, you know, if you do things in secret, the Bible says God will bless you openly. Why? Because you were selfless right. in what you were doing. See, right. you wasn't doing it for the glory. You weren't doing it yeah. to be recognized or to be acknowledged. You were doing it, number one, because it was the will of God. Right. And number two, you saw that God showed you someone who had a need, and then you went ahead and met that need right. and stuff, see? Yeah. And you don't go shout in front of the rooftop. You know, you take somebody, a power to the house or something, you know, and say, well, we just want to welcome you to the community or whatever and stuff. And as soon as you get back home, you start calling everybody in there. Well, child, let me tell you, I took my power over there. You know, they seem like they're pretty good people, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So the whole purpose wasn't to welcome them into the right. community. The purpose was go over there to be nosy and try to check them out and all of this stuff, see? <laughs> And the thing is that we don't do stuff like that. No. You know, we don't do stuff like that. You know, when we do, if the Bible says, do all things as unto the Lord, even if you take a pie to somebody's house, mm -hmm. you do it as unto the Lord because you represent God whatever you do. And wherever you go, you are representing God. Why? Because you claim to be his son and his daughter. That's right. So you represent them and stuff, see? And you need to do the things that God would do, see? Now, I don't know if Jesus would beg a pie or anything, you know, but the thing about it, he ain't going to be going over there trying to be nosy. Right. You know, because he already knows. Right. You know, but Karen would be nosy, I know. <laughs> no. <laughs> she would eat the pie. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably he right. <laughs> He's probably right. But I want to close with this. In Psalms 1, it says, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and so whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.